In this video lecture, we are going to derive the equations to simulate a double pipe, also known as a concentric tube heat exchanger. So a double pipe heat exchanger consists of two pipes, one inside the other. So if this is one of our pipes, we would take another pipe and embed it in there. So we might have something like a hot fluid in this outer region or in the annulus, and that would exchange heat with this another fluid. This particular configuration is called parallel flow, where both fluids go the same direction, as you can see. So we'll do a parallel flow heat exchanger, but extending this to a counter flow heat exchanger is a very similar methodology. So in this particular heat exchanger design, um, what we want to do is we want to take our system and break up, if this is x, we want to take our system and break it up into nodes. So we'll do this differential energy balance on our system. Let's call this node I. And we're going to take, eventually we're going to take the whole entire length of this heat exchanger and break it up into a whole bunch of nodes. So node I, node I minus 1, and here's node I plus 1. So basically we're going to have, with this hotter fluid here on the outside, we're going to have heat going from this outer pipe into the center pipe and heat exchange will happen that way. So our first step here after we've defined our control volumes and let's assume that our inner pipe has a radius of R1 and our outer pipe has a radius of R2. To keep things simple we're going to assume that this inner pipe is thin walled so the inner radius and the outer radius of this inner pipe we're essentially going to assume are the same, or otherwise the thickness of the pipe is negligible. So what we want to do, we're going to do this dynamic energy balance and solve this equation dynamically doing this transient analysis. And this is actually pretty useful. Even if you're doing steady state analysis, it's actually quite useful to start with a transient analysis, start your system at some initial condition, and then just simulate it until it reaches a steady state. That's actually sometimes an easier way to get to a solution. Otherwise, if you had a zero accumulation term, then you're solving a series of algebraic equations. And sometimes it can be difficult to get convergence in those equations. So even if you're doing steady state analysis, starting with transient can actually get you where you want to go and give you a lot of really useful information. Actually, much more information than just doing steady state analysis by itself. So we're going to start by doing an energy balance on node I. Actually, we're going to do a separate energy balance for the inner pipe. Let's call this pipe 1. So this is going to have fluid 1. And then on the outer, we'll do pipe 2, which is going to have fluid 2 um, in it. So let's start with defining our accumulation term. So the accumulation term for this node I in the inner pipe is going to be rho Cp times the volume, and let's assume that this little node is delta x meters thick. So our volume would be a cross-sectional area. In this case, Ac for pipe 1 is just going to be pi r1 squared. So that's our cross-sectional area, and then we'll have our node thickness, and then we're going to have the change in temperature of fluid 1 with respect to time. And because we could have two different fluids, I'm going to go ahead and say this is rho 1 and this is Cp1 and this is Ac1. So we have to distinguish different properties and even different, um, different geometries because the inner pipe might have a different fluid and a different size than the outer pipe. So let's first do our um, in term here. So we're going to have fluid flowing through this. So energy in fluid 1 is coming, it's getting into node I because it's flowing from node I minus 1. So the fluid in node I minus 1 carries some of that energy with it into node I. So this term is going to have m dot 1 times c sub t 1. Um, and then we're also going to have the temperature of node I. Let's do another little out term while we're here just for convenience. So coming out is going to be 
that same term. There's going to be energy leaving node I, um, and it's going to be at the temperature of node I. Oop, I made a mistake. Coming in is actually from node I minus 1, and then going out is the energy from node I. So energy is flowing in at the temperature of node I minus 1, and then it's going out at the temperature of node I. And we're assuming that in each individual node that the temperature throughout is all the same. But then if you make this each node very small, then this gives you a pretty good approximation to continuous operation. So let's do a separate in term here. So how is energy, how else is energy getting into node I? Well, it is, there is convection and conduction happening. So we have um, the fluid is convecting energy to the outer wall here, then it's conducting through that wall, and then it's convecting into here. So to represent all of that, we would calculate an overall heat transfer coefficient. Because this outer fluid is hotter, we're going to assume a positive term going from here into here. So I'm going to say energy coming in is positive, so it's going to be U. The appropriate area here is going to be 2 pi times R1 times delta X. And then ultimately that energy is going from the fluid, um, from fluid 2 into fluid 1. So we're going to have this term T2, where T2 is going to represent the temperature of fluid 2, the ith node minus T1, the ith node. So that represents our energy balance on the interior node. So we can definitely go ahead and solve for dt1, dt, by just dividing everything through by that whole part. So this is going to be m.1, dt1, times t i minus 1 times t i. And we're going to add this convective term coming in, which is going to be represented by this overall heat transfer coefficient. So U represents the combination of convection here, conduction across the pipe wall, and then convection into here. So that's why we use U instead of an H as we've used in other video demonstrations. So then we have 2 pi R1 delta X times T2 ith node minus T1 ith node. And we're going to divide that whole guy by row 1, CT1, AC1, delta X. And then we've solved explicitly for this change in temperature. So now we would do the same thing. We want to couple this energy balance equation with an energy balance equation for the outer tube. So we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to have an accumulation term, but now we're doing this for, this is for fluid one. Now we're going to do this for fluid two. Okay, so our accumulation term is going to be similar, but this is, could physically be a different fluid. So we're going to go row two, CT2, AC2 times delta X multiplied by DT2 DT. So AC2 is going to be this because it's an annulus. So if we looked at a cross section of this, our system looks like this. So here is AC1, and then AC2 is going to be this annular region. And we can calculate that fairly simply. Actually, I'm going to put that in the more convenient place out of the way. So AC2 is going to be equal to pi times R2 squared minus R1 squared. So I'm going to, in the code in the next video, you'll see that I define this prior so we don't have an extra kind of messy equation just making things a little more complicated. So that's how we define AC2. So now we got to define our in and out terms. So similarly, we're going to have m.1 ct1 multiplied by t2 
two now. Oh, I forgot to specify prior in our first interview balance. These are all representative of fluid one. So now we're on fluid two. So we have fluid is coming in from the prior node. So we're up here now. Here's node I for that outer fluid. Here's node I minus one. So energy is coming in the same way. It's coming in from this previous node into here. If this flow were going the other direction, like in a counter flow, we'd have to we'd have to switch this around and have energy coming in from node I plus one and leaving from node I. But that's not the case. This is a co-current flow, also known as a parallel flow heat exchanger, where both fluids are flowing in the same direction. So it's leaving by it's just the fluid at that temperature in node I is just leaving at that same temperature. So this represents our advection term. So energy is also leaving this guy, leaving the outer fluid and going into the inner fluid by that same mechanism, by convection. So that would actually, you could write that as another out term. Oh, this is a minus out. That's a minus out as well. Okay, so this out term, it's a minus out term, so we're going to be losing energy by minus U times the same area as above, 2 pi R1 delta X. And this is going to be T2 ith node minus T1 ith node. And again, we want to use U, our overall heat transfer coefficient, which represents convection in the outer fluid to the pipe wall, conduction through the pipe wall, and then convection from the inner pipe wall into the inner fluid. So U incorporates all of that. And you can figure out how to calculate U from other lecture videos. Okay, so you'll notice the difference here. This term, so I want you to notice um, this term, which represents the convection in term for the inner fluid is the same as this term, except they're opposite in sign. So conservation of energy tells us that ener any energy leaving that outer node is eventually going to go into that. Le any energy leaving the outer pipe is going to go into that inner pipe. And we are making the assumption that our, this outer pipe is going to be insulated. So we don't have any heat loss going from this outer pipe out to ambient. Okay, so now it's just a matter of putting this into equation form. So we have accumulation equals in minus out. So now we get Dt2 dt is equal to, oh man, that's in dot t and that's cp2. Sorry there, because this is fluid 2. So this is m dot 2 cp2 multiplied by T2 I minus one, subtract T2 I. And then we lose energy by convection across that pipe wall. So U times our area, two pi R1 delta X. And here we have T2 I minus T1 I. And then we just divide that whole thing by this term, row 2, CP2, AC2 times delta X. So that's how we derive these two equations. Then it'll just be a matter of coding these up, which is probably the harder part of this. So in our next video, so pay attention for the next video. You can find the link in, the video, in this video's description just below. That next video is going to walk us through how do we code this all into Python and simulate it dynamically so that we get the dynamic temperature profiles of both pipes.